formaldehyde, talc, phenoxyethanol, bond for dioxide, hydroquinion. How are these big chemical names? I had to learn them, but I need to share something with you and please stick with me. Today's discussion is going to be about ingredients that we find in our beauty, personal care or cosmetic products. And there are questions or facts about some of these. Are they comedogenic or non-comedogenic? Are they safe for us and good for our gut health? Are they endocrine disruptors that mess up with our gut health? All these we are going to find out together in this video. Hi guys, Radia here. Today we'll be talking about ingredients that we find in our beauty, cosmetic and personal care products. And yes, this could be a sensitive conversation, but we need to have this talk. And just in case you're seeing me for the first time, welcome around this space. I'm sharing beauty and lifestyle related content and anything else that I feel like I need to share with you guys. So if you think you already like what you hear, kindly join this mindful community by subscribing to this channel and turn on the notification bell just so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I know this conversation can be a very sensitive one. So this is a quick disclaimer. I am not a cosmetic scientist, a dermatologist or a scientist in any way. But what I am, is a curious beauty enthusiast. Now, with all that being said, just in case you see me looking down, I'm trying to be sure of what I'm saying. Therefore, I'm checking in my notes. This is not supposed to be that panic or that scary video that you'll probably wanna run away from, but please stick with me. So the thing is, we often pay attention to what we ingest in our system. So it could be from when you're cooking, what are the ingredients that does not sit well with you or what kind of food is it that you just can't tolerate, okay? So we need to understand these things the same way with cosmetics or with the ingredients of personal products or beauty products. No doubt that there is this debate about good and bad ingredients when it comes to personal care or cosmetics. And there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of ingredients that's been in use for years and decades. As lots of people have become more aware, some people try to be more conscious about the ingredients that they are using. And so far, it's been said that the EU is far far well regulated as compared to the u.s now i'm here somewhere in ghana which is one of the countries in africa right and i'm thinking what are the regulations that has been put in place for africa as a whole or say for nigeria what is navdac or here in ghana what are the regulations in place from the fda so it's been said that some of the ingredients in our products could have links to hormonal imbalance, allergies and irritation, asthma, anxiety, lack of good sleep, poor gut health, and the worst, cancer. These ingredients can be used in some of these products. Facial cleansers, toys, baby products, shampoos, moisturizers, body sprays, deodorant, nail polishes, I mean, this is just to name a few. Now, looking at some of the eight ingredients that I've selected to discuss with you guys, I said just eight. Don't forget there are thousands and thousands of these ingredients, which is why I'm going to be leaving you guys with some links towards the end of this video, just in case you're curious like me. Now, the first one formaldehyde. Formaldehydes are strong smelling colorless chemicals that are used as embalming fluids, preservatives. They can be also used as adhesives in furniture, textiles, nail polishes, and also in hair care products. Formaldehydes becomes most toxic when inhaled. Formaldehydes are said to be a carcinogen, which means it could be a source of cancer. Just putting this out there. The second one is mineral oil. This one for me, I think I've had an experience with it. And as we all know, mineral oil is a byproduct of refined 
crude oil and we know crude oil is a very good source of gasoline and any other petroleum products they are mostly used for sweetening and you can find them in ointments ab oil is a very good example which is why i said i'm coming to this one i can remember when i had my baby we used baby oil on her and in less than two days she actually reacted to it and this actually reminded me of why so many babies react to baby oil that's because it's a very good example of what mineral oil is this usually happens with mineral oil when it's not been refined properly the third ingredient this one has actually been on my radar the third one is polyethylene glycol yes p-e-g <laughs> it's always written as p-e-g dash there is a number with it so PEGs are not necessarily bad unless it's been contaminated by 1,4 dioxin. PEGs are basically used as active suffocants, thickeners, or solvents, which aids with penetration of ingredients in your system or into your bloodstream. Guys, don't forget that whatever you're using on your skin ends up in your bloodstream. That's why you need to choose wisely. And the fact that this helps aid with ingredient penetration is going to open up your pores. So it's going to let the ingredients get into your system. Therefore, this particular ingredient, I find it very, very important because if you are using other active ingredients that are not bad for you, and then there is PEG and some other ingredients that are not supposed to be there guys that means that other ingredients that is not supposed to be in or let me say that toxic ingredients that you really don't need is also penetrating getting into your bloodstream and when they become contaminated they are said to be a carcinogen right, the fourth one this also interests me because personally for me i am being mindful of this one because it's practically in everything bubbly now the fourth one are sulfates. What are sulfates? Sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, and sodium laureth sulfate, SLES. These are basically foaming agents that are sold in a hand wash and just about anything that you can think that gives it that bubbly effect. They can be overly drying causing dryness and irritation leading to breakouts and then clogged pores sodium laureth sulfate can also be contaminated with one for dioxin but if these suffocants are well blended and mild formulations there should be no cause for alarm the fifth one which is also another favorite is alcohol yes not that one that you are sipping on i mean this one I always have alcohol al around me just because they, you can use them as disinfectants. I always use them to disinfect a lot. However, these are very good ingredients in skincare. So there are two types of alcohol. There is the good one and there is the bad one. The bad ones are said to be bad because they seem to leave you to be overly dry, which may cause dehydration to the skin. However, when combined with the right formulations, they are good for you. Also, there is the good alcohol, which are also known as the fatty alcohols used as emulsifiers. Bad alcohols to look out for are denitrate or SD alcohol ethanol and isopropyl alcohol these are solvents and they can be overly drying to your skin now the good alcohols the good alcohols are cetyl and satyral and satyral alcohol they kind of sound alike but i'm gonna put them up here this brings me to the sixth ingredient and we know this one parabens these are the most used the most head of and the most effective preservatives in just about any or lots of product they are very effective despite the fact that their maximum percentage is just one percent or below they seem to be a problem now in lots of products because suddenly most people don't want to use parabens anymore just because they feel like 
it is also a carcinogen there are different types of parabens to look out for just in case you want to avoid them so there is metal paraben there is purple paraben there is brittle paraben there is ethyl parabens it always ends in parabens i don't even know how i fell for this one there was this product that i wanted to buy because i was looking at shooting a video for uh, affordable skincare products and i came across this one it's um a toner with hyaluronic acid and i was just like oh wow let me try this one and ding dang ding looking at the ingredients it has parabens not just parabens now because most of these ingredients that are mentioned and you don't want to find them in the first five to six listings of your ingredients when you are looking at your products you see the ingredients because ingredients are just not just written anyhow especially the first six products that you find there those have the higher concentration of what you're going to use okay so when you see certain ingredients on the first six ingredients you should know that there should be a cause for alarm so my worry is not even for the parabens in this one because again i'm going to regulate what i'm using on my skin at a particular time but i saw some other ingredients in this product and i was just like okay no this is not for me and the seventh ingredient are phthalates so these are plasticizers basically chemicals that are often used as softeners you can find these in products like toys nail polishes and hair care products can be snaked in through fragrance and i'm coming to fragrance in just a bit so phthalates are said to be endocrine disruptors so they're often written as dibetyl phthalates that is dbp or dimethyl phthalate which is dmp or dietyl phthalate which is dep you don't want to mess with that and the eighth one is fragrance yes this may surprise you but do you know that fragrance really has nothing to offer you in a product it has nothing at all to do with the efficacy of a product therefore you might want to reconsider when choosing a product that is highly fragranced in as much as we want all the smell we want to smell good so fragrance is also another ingredient that you don't want to see in that top layer if it's towards the end it could still be okay right however if you have sensitive skin it's okay to just avoid fragrance completely or if you know that there are some certain smells that doesn't just sit well with you you can become allergic to fragrance just because getting one unique smell is a mixture and blends of different synthetic chemicals so let's say for example you're buying that banana or strawberry shampoo for you to get that smell there is thousands and thousands of combinations that is mixed together just to get that unique beautiful smell that you always get this is actually a way brands try to like differentiate their product fragrance can be very very tricky in as much as it can be hard using products without fragrance in them because when products are formulated the smell just doesn't sit well with you which is why let's say when people are using natural care products they say it's better to use essential oils using essential oils which are naturally derived oils or synthetic fragrance really doesn't make a difference because we are human and our body can react to just about anything especially when consumed at a higher percentage so we need to watch out for this one i personally love essential oils when being used in diffusers it just gives you the calm and peace the aroma i mean i get it we love the good smell that's it for all the ingredients in as much as I wish that this could be a straight black and white information, there is still ongoing research about ingredients in general. Although they are said that some of these ingredients are harmless when being used because they are used at a reasonable percentage. But in a situation whereby I use parabens in the morning in my toner, I use parabens again in the morning in my facial wash. Everything builds up over time. And the thing is, there is always a thin line 
between what is being said and what is being heard right now just in case you are curious like me and you want to diversify your information stream just for you to play safe or you just want to know right you can check out um the paula's choice ingredients dictionary this has a lot of information like i'm going to also show a video of how to use some of this and the second one is inky decoder some people say it's inky or inky i just prefer to say inky with inky decoder you can just copy and paste the ingredients and it's going to give you all the information that you need to see and the third one is the think dirty app so you can use this to get all the necessary information and this can actually help you a lot before buying and slaughtering some of these products on your body so you can use some of the provided resources to get information maybe before buying your products if the products of choice that you really really want is going to be beneficial for you for your skin condition or your skin type try to focus on what you want to achieve with your skin trust me there are products that are out there although it might take a long time for you to get it because when it comes to getting products be it skincare be it makeup it's not a one size suits all thing therefore don't go for trends focus on what works for you what you're most comfortable with I try to share this information because most of us are actually not aware about the ingredients that we are using. Watching this video, I've shared my own philosophy and my opinion about some of these ingredients. However, please feel free to use whatever product that you feel most comfortable to use. This video is not supposed to make you feel uncomfortable in any way. It's for you to make this decision for yourself because you are smart to do the right thing. This video was mainly to empower you and please feel free to share your opinion with me about this discussion. If you know more about things like this, I will definitely want to hear from you, maybe in the comment section or you can check my email address in the description box. All right guys, so this is the end of this video. If this was useful to you in any way or form, Kindly do me a favor, share this video with your friends, your family, your colleagues, just about anybody that you think they need this kind of information. They definitely deserve the information, I think. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. Give me a like or dislike. You know, it's still part of the communication, right? I'll leave your comments below. Thank you so much for watching and making it this far. Yes, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.